Proverbs 4, 23. Carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Our life is defined by how we think. The way to happiness. Paano nga ba? Nagkakaroon ng kasiyahan, kagalakan, saya sa buhay. Salamat Panginoon dahil kayo ang Diyos ng kaligayahan. And you want us happy. You want your people happy. Papagliwanagin niyo po ang aming isip para maunawa namin kumisan kung paano kami mismong nagiging sagabal sa sarili naming kaligayahan. Bigyan niyo kami Panginoon ng kaliwanagan at nawa ito ay maging gabay para lalong maging makulay masaya ang buhay na pahiram mo sa amin. Father, be our preacher, our teacher, our healer. We ask you in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior. The way to happiness. May nagsasabi, happiness is the primary duty of life. Tungkulin yan. Purpose to be happy. Decide to be happy. Ecclesiastes 1, 2, 3, and 8. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? All things are wearisome, more than one can say. Sa katalinuhan ni Solomon, sa yaman ng kanyang isip, ng kanyang edukasyon, ng kanyang mga karanasan, napag-isip-isip yung napakaraming walang katuturan sa buhay. Kaya dapat ma-identify yon at ma-identify din natin kung ano ang may katuturan para doon tayo makapag-focus sa buhay. Because in many instances, life could be so meaningless. Marami pang nagtatanong, ba't ang dami ngayon nagpapakamatay, ba't uso? Bakit nga ba? When life is the primary duty of life, bakit sariling katawan ay pinapatay? Ano nangyayari sa pag-iisip? Bakit nakakarating sa ganun? Life could be so pleasureless. In fact, life could be so lifeless. And in many cases, at least at some time in their lives, life could be so unhappy. Pero hindi naman ito ang intention ng Diyos para sa atin. What are the several ways to happiness? To be very basic and primitive about happiness, good appetite at the dining table is fundamental to happiness. Good appetite at the dining table is a foundation of good appetite in life and for life. Kaya nga ang tawag dyan, eh, basic need. Eh. Basic, fundamental. It's very important. You cannot get by without it. Make it a point na may gana kayong kumain sa buhay. Hindi yung kumakain ka lang para ka mabusog at hindi ka mamatay. Dapat yung pagkaka- pagkain ay special, kahit hindi mahal. Yung preparasyon, yung paraan ng pagkain. Ecclesiastes 5.18 What is the best thing to do in the short life that God has given us? I think we should enjoy eating, drinking, and working hard. That is what God intends for us to do. Kaya nalikha ng Diyos yung digestive system. Para lagyan mo na idadigest. Kaya nilikha niya ang mga needs na ito at merong pleasure in filling those kind of needs. Sabi niya, ito ang intention ng Diyos. So dapat enjoy ka pag kumakain, hindi lang basta makakain at makaraos. Enjoy ka sa pag at enjoy ka rin sa pagtatrabaho. Kasi yung pagtatrabaho mo will put food on the table and will allow you to enjoy your meals. Appetite at the dining table is building block in appetite for and in life itself. Kaya pag yung tao, lalo pag may sakit, wala nang ganang kumain, ayaw nang kumain, kinakabahan na yung mga nagmamahal sa kanya sa buhay. Ayaw nang kumain ng nanay. Read my lips kung anong ibig sabihin nun. Ayaw nang mabuhay. Wala nang ganang mabuhay. At pag nawala na nang ganang mabuhay, kadalasan, nawawala na rin sa kanya ng gana yung buhay. Tapos naghihiwalay na sila. And for this great appetite, 
his very great appetite, Jesus was called a glutton and a drunkard. Si Jesus mismo, tinawag nilang masiba, matakaw, lamonista. Kasi may gana siyang kumain, may gana siyang uminom. In fact, napakaraming okasyon na si Jesus ay nasa mga handaan, nasa mga kainan, at ang kauna-unahang himala na ginawa ng Jesus to turn water into wine, to extend the happiness of a wedding party. You can see, not something more profound as people would expect, like magpalakad ng pilay, like magpaalis ng masasamang espiritu. No. Gumawa ng alak mula sa ordinaryong tubig. And that is a statement about the intention of God through Jesus that the people who will follow Jesus that in and through Jesusness, people will have a more enjoyable social life. Luke seven thirty four. But because the Son of Man goes around eating and drinking, you say Jesus eats and drinks too much. Yun ang comment ng mga critics sa kanya. Obviously, it was one of the more visible attributes of his life. That she yung tinatawag na o bong bivong. May gana sa buhay. Sabi nga nitong si Confucius, the Chinese philosopher, coarse rice for food, water to drink, happiness may be enjoyed even in this. Kahit na mamurahing bigas, kahit na simpleng tubig, merong kang mahuhugot na kaligayahan dyan kung marunong kang humugot. Very important, brothers and sisters, Never argue in front of food. Huwag kayong maghahain tapos huwag kayong magbabangayan sa dining table. There's one thing sure, wawalang kayo lahat ng ganang kumain. Sayang ang food. There will be loss of appetite. Yan ang mga dapat hindi ginagawa sa harap ng pagkain. Yung nag-aaway kayo habang kumakain. Kasi pag nag-aaway ang tao, stress siya, naninigas ang kanyang buong katawan, ang digestive system niya hindi mag-work, so we live in, you will have indigestion. At saka napaka-convenient magbatuhan pag may mga plato. So, dapat huwag muna, saka na lang magtalo-talo pag nailigpit na ang mga ganyang mga flying saucer. Yan ang mga literal na mga flying saucer. Another way to happiness, alam naman nating lahat, paalala lang to, review, rest and sleep. Yung mga taong miserable, mainit ang ulo, hindi masarap kausap, walang gana sa buhay mo, puyat ka, no? Puyat ng puyat. Bakit nilikha ng Diyos ang gabi at pinadilim ang gabi para matulog ang tao? Kaya may mga lifestyle na talagang nakaset para kontrahin yun, nagbabayad ang katawan. Jeremiah 31, 25-26, Those who feel tired and worn out will find new life and energy, and when they sleep, they will wake up refreshed. Ang daming himala na nagagana pag tulog ang tao o ang mga nilalang ng Diyos. Pati yung iba. Your body repairs itself. Mga balancing happens. Lahat ng mga pagpapahinga ng iyong isip, ng iyong puso, and you wake up refreshed. In fact, pagka meron kang problema, hindi mo malaman ang solusyon. Iwan mo lang dyan sa tabi ng kama mo at pagka nahiga ka na, ipagpray mo lang, Lord, reveal to me your answer when I wake up. At marami, nagpapatoto. Pag gano'n ang prayer nila sa gabi, pagdating ng umaga, all of a sudden, you're rika. Biglang, malinaw na sa kanila yung dating malabo. Tulog lang ang kailangan. Sa Japan, at sa ibang maraming bansa, lumalaki ang benta ng mga sleeping pills at kung ano ng mga relaxant at sarisaring mga therapy kasi marami mga tao hindi mapagkatulog sa dami ng iniisip sa buhay sa dami ng mga stress So mga kapatid invest in sleep You have to invest time talent and treasure sa pagtulog kasi ang halaga ng tulog The quality of your sleep determines the quality of your waking hours. Kung gaano kaganda ang tulog mo, yun ang kokorte sa ikagaganda ng maghapon mong kasunod habang gising ka. So invest in a good sleeping place. 
invest in a good bed and good beddings. Kasi kung ino-observe mo ang tama at hindi ka pa sobrang senior, you sleep at least 8 hours a day. 8 hours a day of 24 hours is one-third of your life. Kaya dati may advertisements noong 1970s, I want one-third of your life. Ang nagsasalita, kama. Tapos yung kama mo, tabi-tabing eh, bukol-bukol. Ano namang klaseng quality ng pagtulog yun? Tapos ang mahal na mahal ng bag mo, branded, matutulugan mo ba yung bag? Yung kama, ang gandahan mong investment. Tapos yung iba, kung kailan pa matanda na, may sakit na, tsaka pabibili ng magandang bed na nagfo-fold, tumataas yung mga ulo at paa. Don't call it hospital bed kasi parang ayaw mo tuloy bilhin habang maaga pa. If you can, if you have the space and the money, buy that kind of bed. Kung ayaw mong tulugan araw-araw, at least yung mga time na masakit ang ulo mo, doon ka mahiga. Yung mga time na hirapan ka bumangon, doon ka mahiga. Yung may sakit ka, doon ka mahiga. Kasi magpatong-patong ka ng mga una na bukol-bukol, tabi-tabing ito yung gagalaw ka, nalalaglag yung iba, ayos ka ng ayos. Why don't you buy a nice hospital-style bed? Early. Kasi yung iba, kung kailan magkakasakit, dalawang taon silang may sakit, at saka sila biglang magtunto dahil sa gain. Two years lang nila nagamit yung bed. Eh kung ang aga mong binili, di kahit hindi ka pa matanda, hindi ka may sakit, ginagamit mo na, nakinabang ka. Alam niyo yung mga ganyang bed, ang daling bumangon. Kasi kung automatic, tataas na yung ulo mo, napipili-pili mo, kung meron kang acid reflux, umaakit yung mga acid na stomach mo sa lalamunan mo, kaya pagising mo, ang sakit-sakit ng throat mo, doon ka mahiga sa ganong bed, nakataas ng konting ulo mo, invest in it. Hindi nag-i-invest kayo sa mga cellphone na may mga bread toaster sa loob. Bumili ka lang kayo ng bread toaster, mas mura pa yun. Yung sari-sari ang ginagasusan natin na hindi naman talaga mahalaga. No? Si Jesus, nag-i-invest siya sa mealtime ng kanyang mga alagad. Mark 6.31 but so many people were coming and going that Jesus and the apostles did not even have a chance to eat. Then Jesus said, Let's go to a place where we can be alone and get some rest. Si Jesus yan, ha? Hindi niya sinabing, Let's die, let's kill ourselves serving the people. No! Na-observe niya, hindi na makakain ng maayos yung mga apostles niya, mga disciples niya, mga volunteers niya. Sabi niya, Humiwalay muna tayo sa karamihan, pumunta tayo sa tahimik na lugar at makakain tayo ng tahimik. Ganun ang pagpapahalaga ni Jesus sa mealtime. So prioritize and protect your meals, your rest, your relaxation. It is part of worship. When you worship God, you live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. So kumakain ka, may gusto makipag-usap sa'yo, sabi ng asawa mo, nagwa-worship siya, mamaya ka na bumalik para ka makakain ng mahusay. Bakit yung worship mo, yung program lang na merong kantahan at mga dasalan? Ang buong life natin is a lifestyle of worship. And God wants you to enjoy your meals. So beautify your meals. And enjoy your meals. Pagandahin ang hain, napapaganda naman yan para ganahan ang kakain. Kahit ang kakainin mo lang, dalawang danggit. Pero may mga korting bulaklak pa ng mga kamatis na nakapaligid. Nakakagana yun. Kailangan ganun, hindi pagtingin mo doon sa lalagyan ng ulam, inantok ka na. Kakaantok ang formation ng mga danggit na to. Wala kang gana sa buhay. And brothers and sisters, respect people's meals. Pag kumakain sila, hayaan natin kumain. Doktor, kumakain, hindi ka pa naman namamatay ng ingisay, mamaya ka napatingin sa kanya. Diba? Hindi naman life and death yan eh. Kasi kailangan din niyang kumain. Professionals have to eat. Servants of God have to eat. As exemplified by Jesus. Nakapaghintay at pinaghintay nila ang mga lumpo, ang mga pipi, ang mga naalihan naman sa mga espirito. Picnic muna sila. Kawin niyo yung policy sa buhay. Kung bisan busy kayo sa trabaho, busy ang mga family members, wala ba lang kayong time to have an enjoyable meal together? Not even once a week? Ipinaglalaban yan. Sa so 1 Kings 19, 5-8, si Elijah gusto nang mamatay. But he recovered strength and stopped wanting to die after he was able to sleep and eat. Gutom lang pala, kaya gusto niyang mamatay. Marami mga tao nga nagpapakamatay because of chemical imbalance lang eh. Yung mga depressed na pinapainom ng doktor nila ng mga medications, 
Tapos nakalimutan uminom o hindi uminom for whatever, naging sobrang imbalance, tumalon. One of my best friends did that in Germany, a German guy. Na hindi siya nakainom ng kanyang mga medication, eh, meron siyang depression. Because alam niya yung depression, yung pagpapakamatay, chemical imbalance yan ang katawan. Kaya kung sobra ka na din depressed, nalulungkot ka, umain ka, may iba yan. Magpawis ka. Pumunta ka sa gym, magkakit manaog ka ng hagdan, lumabas ka, magbuhat ka ng mga troso, matatagal yung depression mo. Kaya ka na de-depress, nagkukulong kasi sa kwarto eh. Sasara ka pa ng bintana, magpapatugtog ka pa ng kantang ang title ay Tuwing Lulubog Ang Araw. May ganun talaga ha. Pumuso yun, 1965. So ano mangyayari sa'yo? Kailangan lumabas ka. Lagi ako nakakatanggap ng mga message, dito, nade-depress po ako para wala na akong ganang mabuhay. Nasaan ka ba? Nandito po sa room. Sino ka usap mo? Wala po. Eh, lumabas ka. Kaya ka nagkakaganyan-ganyan, paaraw ka. Alam niyo, pag nagpaaraw kayo, sisigla kayo agad. Huwag kayong maniwala sa mga derma na dapat kayo maputla. Mga puting kanlong. Ang puti-puti mo dahil nakakanlong ka lagi. Hayaan mo na magkandag iba-iba yung kutis mo kung masaya ka naman. Yung naarawan ka, yung pag nakita ka, bakit naarawan ito? Bukan nag-enjoy. Labas nga ito si prinsesa na kulay pulbos. Di ba? Nasaan ka? Nasa dilim. Kaanin mo yung maganda. Kung natural kang maganda yung kutis mo, kahit na nagbibilad ka sa araw, ay ganyan pa rin. Okay. Pero huwag kang umiwas sa araw, inilagay yan ng Diyos para ka mabilad. Sa tamang oras, syempre, kasi marami na ngayon mga cancerous effects ang mga UV lights. Pero sa tamang oras, early morning, ang simple-simple para mawala yung depression, kumain ka, lumabas ka, magsaya ka, magpawis ka, magpabilad ka, talsik yan. Importante. Dadagdagan mo pa ng prayer. But I don't always prescribe a lot of prayer sa ganyang issue. Kasi marami sa nagpe-pray, mga malulungkot. Tapos sila pa paligid sa'yo. Lagi pa sila iyak ng iyak. Magpa-fast tayo ngayon. Ha? Magpa-fast pa? Depressed na nga ako eh. Diba? So, mas damihan mo yung activity. At isa pang mahalaga, tuwing pwede. A way to happiness is romance. Relationship. Huwag mag-end denial dyan yung mga wala. Kung wala, sabi niyo, wala lang eh, pero gusto ko. Pero huwag sabihin, kasi blessed singleness ako. Huwag kayo in denial. Kung talagang zero kayo, sabi niyo, zero lang kasi eh. Pero, ano naman na blessedness sa singleness? Yun lang iba talaga, walang choice. Di ba? Bihirang-bihirang yung talagang pagkapanganak, pinili niyang gusto kong maging solo sa buhay. So, be in the market. Circulate. Diba? Market your beauty. Para hindi ka lagi na lang blessed singleness, yung biglang may nag-text, ay, ayoko na maging blessed single. Song of Solomon, one of the most rarely read books in the Bible, chapter 1, verses 12 to 13, talks about romance between a man and a woman. She speaks, My king, while you were on your couch, my love was a magic charm. You, my love, are on the apple tree among the trees of the forest. Your shade brought me pleasure. Your fruit was sweet. You led me into your banquet room and showered me with love. Refresh and strengthen me with raisins and apples. I am hungry for love. Put your left hand under my head and embrace me with your right arm. Are you reading the Bible? Yes. Ecclesiastes 9.9 Life is short and you love your wife. So enjoy being with her. This is what you are supposed to do as you struggle through life on this earth. Kailangan nag-i-enjoy yung mag-asawa in all aspects, in all respects. Everything is honorable in the marriage bed. And partners are to enjoy life together. So be as together as much as possible. Yun ang ibig sabihin kaya kami partner. Deuteronomy 24.5 If a man and a woman had been married less than one year, he must not be sent off to war or sent away to do forced labor. He must be allowed to stay home for a year and be happy with his wife. Ano'y batas nila noon? Hindi ka pwede ipadala sa gera. Pag less than one year pa lang kayo ng bagong kasal, kailangan isang buong taon kayong nabuulayaw. Can you imagine that kind of provision? It's a romance leave from the army 
or from forced labor. 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5, itong si Pablo na talagang mapinanghimasukan lahat ng aspeto ng buhay ng kapwa, Husbands and wives should be fair with each other about having sex. A wife belongs to her husband instead of to herself. And a husband belongs to his wife instead of to himself. So, don't refuse sex to each other unless you agree to not have sex for a little while in order to spend time in prayer. Then Satan will not be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So ang sabi ni Pablo, Hoy babae, huwag mong tanggihan ang asawa mo. Anong headache, headache? Diba? O lalaki, anong pagod-pagod? Sabi ganun, your, wa- your body belongs to your wife. Your body belongs to your husband. Of course, this is Paulness. Meron tayong Jesusness na alam, di ba? Yung mga ni Jesus. This is distinctly Paulness. I mean, Jesus did not talk about these things. It could be situational. And because this is Paul speaking, there are teachings that he says that are very, very Jesus. There are things that are very personal to him. May mga sinasabi pa nga siyang, I, not the Lord, speaks. This teaching is from me, not from the Lord. So, Paulness. May mga roon siyang mga strong opinions on other styles of life, on other aspects of life. And this could be one of those. So, it need not be absolute and universal. Parang kumbaga, suggested serving ni Paul about the life of a husband and a wife together. But certainly, there are very valid reasons when you may refuse because of very valid health reasons, even emotional reasons. So yung mga sinasabi ni Paul na ganyan, use it when applicable and when it doesn't con- uh, go against the love of Jesus in your life. So maraming ganyan si Paul na mga sinasabi. Situational. Kung bagay sa context, bagay do sa detail, apply it. Pero kung mas pangit ang magiging bunga, you need not because this is Paulness. But the essence of what he was saying was, do not demonize the senses. Reaction kasi yan sa New Testament. Ang prevalent uh, philosophy nung panahon ng New Testament sa Israel ay yung Greek philosophy. And sa Greek philosophy na uso nung panahon na yun, minamasama nila ang anything carnal, anything physical, anything earthly, worldly. Ang ina-idealize nila, nila yung unseen, yung spirit, yung mga teorya ng mga kap- pagiging pure in the spirit. At nahawa ang even ng culture ng Israel sa ganong klasing pananaw na lahat ng masarap sa katawan, masarap sa buhay, masarap sa panlasa ay masama. Pero hindi yun ang itinuro ni Jesus. Kaya nga napaka-strong statement ang first miracle niya, paggawa ng wine. Tinatawag siyang gluten and a drunkard, a friend of sinners and tax collectors. Because the Lord was setting people free from that very Greek-influenced ideology na masamang mag-enjoy. Dapat magdusa ka lang at gumanti ka na lang sa langit. Doon ka na lang bumawi. Hindi concept ni Jesus yun. It was a very Greek concept that was embraced even by the people of Israel during the time of Jesus. So another way to happiness is enjoyment of what is at hand. Kung anong meron, enjoyin mo. Huwag kang maghanap ng wala. Malulungkot ka lang. Sabi ni Percy Bysshe Shelley, we look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Kaya daw pag tinignan mo lagi, yung before, wala pa. Yung after, wala na. Malulungkot ka lang. Huwag ka masyadong magdrama-drama about the past. Tapos na yun eh. At huwag ka masyadong makoncern about the future. Wala pa yun. Yung eto, hawak mo. Ngayon, enjoy it. That's all you have. Yesterday was a negotiated check. Tomorrow is only a promissory note. Only today is called cash. That's all you have today. You don't have tomorrow. You are not sure if you will be there tomorrow. And the past is no longer yours. All you have is now. Pag hindi mo in-enjoy ang now mo, lugi ka. Ecclesiastes 8.15 So I think we should get as much out of life as we possibly can. Then we can make it through this troublesome life that God has given us here on earth. Importante. To add life in your years and to have add life in your moments. So in every moment, minimize pain. 
Kayo ang mag-isip how to minimize pain in every aspect of your life and maximize pleasure. And do not demonize pleasure. Do not glamorize pain. It's not the Jesus way. Ecclesiastes 3.22, we are meant to enjoy our work and that's the best thing we can do. Pati trabaho. Kung nagdurusa ka at hindi mo talaga gusto yung trabaho, kinakatakutan mo ang tuwing lunes dahil papasok ka na, find another work. Do something else. But do not waste your life doing something you hate. Doing something you don't enjoy. So enjoy whatever you do. Whenever you do it. And when you have the choice, do what you enjoy. Of course, needless to say, within godly limits. Have what you want. And if you cannot have what you want, want what you have. Para kasumaya. Ecclesiastes 11.8 even if you live a ripe, to a ripe old age, you should try to enjoy each day because darkness will come and will last a long time. Siyempre, ang tinutukoy na darkness is death. Sabi niya, mamamatay ka, kaya habang buhay ka, kahit matanda ka na, mag-enjoy ka. Hindi yun na sabihin, uy, matanda na ako. Eh, ano ngayon kung matanda ka na? Mag-enjoy ka pa rin. Habang buhay ka pa at kaya, mag-enjoy. Don't just count the days. Make the days count. And celebrate and enjoy every moment. Because tomorrow, baka wala ka ng moment. Ito lang ang sure, yung hawak mo ngayon. It is very, very important to purpose to enjoy. Yung talagang tiyakin mo na gusto kong mag-enjoy, mag-enjoy ako. Yung pagbangon mo sa umaga, sa mga Lord, with your help, I will enjoy this day. I will find enjoyment in what happens this, in this day. Hindi ako magpapatalo sa gloom, sa sadness, sa worry. I will find joy. Kakatasin ko kahit bakal para makuha ko ang mga katas ng saya. Ganun dapat ang purpose mo sa buhay. Hindi iba ang kinakatas nila, lungkot eh. Laging humahanap ng lungkot. Humahanap ng ikakalungkot, humahanap ng alalahanin. Kaya miserable tuloy ang buhay eh. And very importantly, a way to happiness is to savor good company. Isang blessing na may kasamang masarap kasama. Kay asawa mo yun, kay anak mo yun, magulang mo kapatid. Pag masarap kasama, blessing yan. Sabi nga nala, friends, multiply our joy and divide our sorrow. So maganda na meron kang good friend or a few friends. Acts 2.42 yung mga unang kristyano nun, they spent their time learning from the apostles and then they were like family to each other. They also broke bread and prayed together. Kaya gusto ko lahat kayo, member na sa bahay eh. Yung meron kayong maliit na group, during the week, nakikita-kita kayo doon sa kanya-kanya mga bahay-bahay, kumakain kayo, nagsiselebrate, nagdadalawan sa mga may sakit, damayan, tulungan. Kasi yun ang nagpapasaya sa buhay. Enjoy parties. Weddings, banquets, fellowship. This is the example that Jesus gave to us. Tapos maraming mga born-again Christian, di hindi mo na isang party, parang masama. Siyempre, depende kung ano gagawin nyo doon. Ba't ka gagawa ng masama? Ang dami naman magagawang mabuti during a party. John 2, 1-2 Three days later, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at a wedding feast in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited and were there. So, mahilig silang umatid sa mga ganyang gawain. At doon sa kwento ng prodigal son, pagbalik niya sa kanyang father, in Luke 15, 20-32, the father throws a party. Very important. Pati sa mga kwento ni Jesus, heaven is almost always symbolized by a banquet. Isang malaking handaan, kainan. So, ask and look for companions. 2 Timothy 4, 11. Sabi ni Paul, Only Luke has stayed with me. Mark can be very helpful to me, so please find him and bring him with you. So si Paul mismo, naghahanap ng mga kasama. O tayo nyo dito, gusto ko makasama ito, makasama yon. Kasi talagang mahalaga yon. Invent events to enjoy people. Yung gumawa ka ng event, alam nyo lalo yung mga kapatid natin na may resources, Ba, meron kayong konting pera, meron kayong lugar, meron kayong garden, meron kayong garahe, meron kayong bahay. 
Ano yung bento kayo na mga okasyon? Para masaya, para maraming tao. And have peace and fulfillment, even and especially in aloneness. Siyempre, hindi naman lagi may tao. Yung mga moment na talagang walang tao. Nag-iisa ka, even that you enjoy. Isipin mo na blessing din yon, Pahinga mo lang mula sa napakaraming mga pagtitipon. Pahinga mo para mag-ipon ng lakas. To collect your thoughts. Magbulay-bulay, magmuni-muni. Even aloneness can be and should be enjoyed. Because it's inevitable. Huwag kayong magreklamo pag nag-iisa kayo, enjoyin nyo. Tapos pag may mga tao na, enjoyin nyo rin. Hindi baligtad. Pag matao, nagreklamo ka. Pag nag-iisa ka, nagreklamo ka rin. Hindi yung buong buhay mo reklamo. And appreciate times of plenty. May mga panahon talaga na, wow, ang dami-dami blessing. Hindi naman laging ganun eh. So sa mga ganun panahon, enjoy it. Proverbs 15.6, The house of the righteous contains great treasure. So talagang pag natutuwa ang Panginoon sa iyo, righteous living, the Lord can bless you with a lot of even material things. And remember this, huh? the definition of righteousness, especially through Jesusness, is doing good to others. Yun ang righteousness kay Jesus. Hindi yung mga kung ano-ano mga moral and mga purity laws ni Moses. Righteousness is doing good to others. So yan yung mga righteous. When you do good to people, God can do a lot of good to you as well. Proverbs 10.22, The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and He adds no trouble to it. So, do not deny, do not depreciate plenty. Yung, wow sister, yung mayaman ka na yata. Mo, yes, the yes, sana madagdagan pa. Hindi yung, hindi, hindi naman, hindi naman. Akala mo, laging uutangan. Sa bagay, baka utangera ka nga, kaya ganun, di ba? Yung, ang ganda ng bahay mo, sister, hindi, ang liit nga eh. Ano ka ba? Appreciate mo yung blessing sa'yo. Ang ganda-ganda mo, sister. Thank you, pinaghirapan ko yan. Hindi yung, ha? Wala naman akong ginagawa. Yung pala, tatlong oras sa parlor. Pag kami pinupuri, sabihin natin, praise God, thank you. Misa, ang galing-galing mong kumanta. Praise God, thank you. Hindi, hindi naman po. Hindi yun pagiging magaling na anak ng Diyos. Sino ngaling yun? Yung, pagka pinabless ka ni Lord, yung, yung, pasalamat ka. Uy, umaasenso ka yata. Yes, thank God. Sana tuloy-tuloy pa to. Hindi yung di naman. Yung lag, isa pa natin ako yung ugali na yun na pagka maganda, pinapaliit. No? Pero pag sinabi mo, ang ganda mo sister, hindi, pangit nga ako. Sabi nang kapausap mo sa bagay, galit ka naman. <laughs> Kailangan, appreciate. Be happy. Sabi nga nila, chill lang tayo, chill. Para masaya. Diba yung hindi ganun na lagi tayong naghahanap ng reklamo. Ecclesiastes 5.19 Suppose you are very rich and able to enjoy everything you own. Then go ahead and enjoy working hard. This is God's gift to you. Napansin nyo lagi yung being rich, having plenty is always associated with working hard. Ah. Hindi yung nang didilihin siya ka lang kasi kaya ka nagkakaroon. Kailangan paghirapan mo yan at enjoyin mo yan. Do not apologize for having plenty of goods. Binebless ka ni Lord eh. Ba't ka mag-apologize? O huwag mong ipagyabang, huwag mong ipangmata at ipangapi sa kapwa. And mild tip, mild lang to kasi it's not always applicable. Try to not collect and have a lot of things even if you can afford now. Kasi darating ang panahon, lalo pong nagkaedad ka na, mawawala ka rin ng gana. Tapos hindi mo alam kung kanino mo ipapamana. Ang 3,455 collections mo ng mga elepanteng figurin. Kasi ang dami mong kinolek, lalo nung afford mo pa. Then later on, hindi mo alam kung kanino ipapamana. Alam niyo ang taong maraming koleksyon, maraming pera, maraming kayamanan. Pag above 60, naghahanap-hanap na ng mga papamanahan. Sino kaya dito ang masinop? Sino ang mahusay? Sino ang magaling? So, alam nyo na, ha? pag may mga tiyo-tiyo kayo, tiyo-tiyo na above 60 at mapera, umlacing-placing na kayo na ang peg nyo, masino. Di ba? Dahil naghahanap-hanap na yan ng papamanahan. Kahit sa mga anak, tinitingnan, sino kaya sa mga anak ko? Kanino kaya ipapamana ang piano? Kanino kaya ibibigay yung mga ganun? Kasi alam nyo kung anong ibig sabihin lang, tumarating ang panahon, you also let go. Hindi ka na rin masyado interested. So, mahilig ka mag-collect. Okay lang, pero don't collect too much. Later on, it will become a burden. 
Don't build too many homes kahit kaya mo. Mapagawa tayo ng vacation house sa ganon, sa ganyan. Para buong buhay, doon lang tayo magbabakasyon. Laki-laki na investment natin, hindi yung lagi tayong titira. Wala tayo ibang mapupuntahan. Tapos ang dami-dami yung nakikitira. So problema mo pa, may kumot ba dyan? Mayroon mapagkain, may plato ba? Pagka may mga nakikitira sa bahay mo, burden. There's a big burden in ownership. Kaya laging papamanahan ka, papamanahan ka, hindi laging ang saya mo. Kasi burden din yan, magbabayad ka ng tax taon-taon, magme-maintain ka, pariper ka ng pariper. You know, try to not have too much. Sinabi na yan ng Panginoon. Sinabi na yan sa Bible. You know, happiness is not in the abundance of things. It is your mentality. It is the way you think. It is how you live every day, every moment of your life. Meanwhile, if you have a lot, do not be guilty for enjoying. Binigyan ka ng Panginoon, enjoyin mo. Don't forget to share with others. May pera kayo, ang sarap ng kain yung pamilya sa restaurant. Tanungin mo yung waiter na napakagaling mag-serve. Anong paboritong pagkain ng asawa mo o mga anak mo sa mga menu dito? Sasabihin niya yun, umorder ka, ipabalot mo, ibigay mo sa kanya o itake home sa asawa mo. Share! Huwag kayong kain ng kain. Enjoy ka ng enjoy. Yung mga nagsaserve, wala man lang. Tapos hanggang kalit-liit ang senti mo, kinukuha mo pa doon sa sukli. At one thing, pagka ang waiter magaling mag-serve sa inyo, magtiklop kayo ng konting pera sa inyong kamay, iabot nyo sa kanya. For you. Kasi pag ibinigay mo sa waiter ang tip, diretso sa kamay niya, kanya yon. Pag iniwan mo yun doon sa mesa, para sa lahat yon. So mag-iwan ka ng para sa lahat at kung very good ang service niya, merong para sa kanya. Always reward people for being good to you. Now, you want to be a little bit wiser. Malaki ang tip na ibibigay mo. Ibigay mo na pagdating mo pa lang. Huwag mo na hintayin tapos sa kayo mag-servan. Para ang service sa'yo ang ganda. Hindi naman niya kasi alam na bibigyan mo ng 5,000, di ba? So, kung ano lang yung service sa'yo, tapos 5,000 pala, sabi niya, ay, ang laki naman, sana sinerbang ko mabuti. Eh, sana yung nalaglag na kutsara, pinalitan ko. Di ba? Eh, ibibigay mo rin lang pala, diagahan mo na. Para pare-pareho kayong enjoy sa buhay. But all along, always work. Work so you would have surplus goods. Kaya enjoy, kaya marami, kasi maraming paghihira, pagsisikap. Work not only to survive, work to produce surplus so you have more to give away. And another way to happiness is to learn contentment even in times of want. Kahit sino dumadaan sa mga panahon na medyo kulang, medyo hirap, pa kahit sa mga panahon na yun, pag-aralan mo pa rin maging masaya. Because nothing is permanent. Poverty nor wealth, health or sickness, walang permanente. Gumugulong ang buhay. Nag-iiba-iba. Proverbs 15.16 It is better to obey the Lord and have only a little than to be very rich and terribly confused. Not all the rich are confused. But it could be confusing, especially kung hindi mo kayang i-process dahil hindi ka sanay. So, kung ano ang meron, enjoy it. At kung sakali man na naliliitan ka sa iyong kita, sabi sa Luke 3.14, be satisfied with your pay. Because when you always work well, you work hard, God will change the situation of your life. Lighten present difficulties by prospects of future ease. Kung nahihirapan kayo ngayon, mag-project kayo ng panahon sa bukas, in the immediate future, na kayo'y makakaahon dyan, Because that can really happen. Pag sobrang dilim ng gabi, you survive by looking forward to the beauty of the morning, not by on focusing on the darkness of the night. Kailangan meron kang tinitingnan na malayo. At para masaya ka sa buhay, lagi kang magtapon sa malayo-layo ng magagandang bagay para excited kang makarating doon para mapulot siyang wali. Tapos tapon ka uli sa malayo para lagi kang may direction, may motivation to move on, to move forward. Halimbawa, umimbento ka ng event three weeks from now, one month from now. Halimbawa, makikita kita kayong tatlong magpipinsan o naka-schedule na yan two months from now. Kahit walang ka-event, event yung buhay mo ngayon, meron kang nilulook forward to na magkikita kita kayong tatlong magpipinsan two months from now. Pagkatapos doon, mag-imbento ka uli ng something three months ahead. Lagi ka dapat merong tinitingnan sa future para magkaroon ka ng lakas na mag-forward, lumakad ng lumakad, kasi parang wala, wala naman nangyayari, wala katuligan, wala kang ine-expect at wala kang 
inaasahan. 2 Corinthians 4, 16-17 We never give up. Our bodies are gradually dying, but we ourselves are being made stronger each day. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. So yun, magtapon ka rin to the future, magtapon ka sa heaven, magtapon ka sa eternity mo na mga wealth, ng magagandang gawa, na aantayin mo yung makarating ka doon to enjoy the blessing and the benefit. Do what is headed for rewards, not punishment. Lahat ng ginagawa natin ay may bunga. Ang itinatanim, nagbubunga. Magtanim ka na magtanim ng ang bunga ay reward, hindi punishment. Para habang dumadaan ang araw, humahaba ang panahon, mas excited kang makarating sa future kasi nagtanim ka kahapon ng pang-reward. Pero kung ang itinin mo pang punishment, nakakatakot talaga yung future. Plant good things and you will harvest good things. Proverbs 4.23 Carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. So, you want to have more happiness, you want to be happy, Discipline your mind to think happy thoughts, to think in ways that will bring happiness into your life. Think your way to happiness. It is how you think. It is not how much is in your pocket. It is not who is there or who is not there. It is what is in your mind. If unhappy, change your mindset. Makakalata na lagi kang malungkot, palitan mo ang iyong pag-iisip. Romans 12.2 Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And change your body chemistry as we've already discussed. Kaya mahalaga yung appetite for food and drink. Because our body chemistry shapes our emotions. Talagang yung naaamoy mo, nararamdaman mo, nakakain mo, may effect sa yung emotion. At yung emotion mo ang nagpapasaya o nagpapalungkot. Be the captain of your soul as God enables you and empowers you do not waste time in unhappiness. Purpose to be happy, to be happier, and to be an agent of happiness to many people's lives. This is what Jesus wants you to do. This He exemplified in His life, and this He left as commandments, as instructions, that we should love one another because there's a lot of happiness in love. Father, we thank You that You want us happy. Turuan nyo kami maging mapanuri para masuri namin ang paraan ng pag-iisip namin, ang aming habits and lifestyles that cause unhappiness in us and in others. And turuan nyo kami, Lord, to be more open so that you will see opportunities to be happy and seize them and be happy and share this happiness with people. Pagbulay-bulayan natin, mga kapatid, purpose to be happier.